Kids, it's been a while since we've had a talk, so this will be my vlog for April 11th, 2017. I've been doing vlogs for a very long time and videos. Oof, long time. Anyway, real quick, a new t-shirt. Yes, here's my Lighthouse t-shirt. I got two of them. For those of you that follow me on Facebook, you'll know that I've been very active in a place called The Lighthouse, uh, which is here in Citrus County, uh, Florida. And it's for adults with mental illness that are referred by a medical professional. And the one rule is they have to be stable. In other words, they can't be aggressive. They want people that can that don't have a temper. Now that can be a challenge when you are mentally ill. So people that go to the lighthouse are well medicated and adjusted to life with mental illness. And <clears throat> as impossible as that seems to some people, it's actually quite easy um, to do. You can actually control yourself on with mental illness to the extent where you can get by with an average day. Um, now, that's not to say that you can hold down a stressful job or um, put yourself in, in situations where you're going to trigger. Uh, that certainly would not be a good thing. And you can take what is seemingly stable and destabilize it very quickly. But with the Lighthouse, they have staff that are trained and um, they have members like myself who have been living with mental illness for quite a long while and are used to being around people with mental illness. Now, how can you be learn to be around people with mental illness? Well, when you get shoved in a mental hospital or you put yourself in a mental hospital, guess what? You're surrounded by people with mental illness that are not stable. And you learn to survive. Or you get your, your ass kicked, one of the two. So you learn really quick that people with mental illness don't like to be violent. They don't like drama. But... When pushed, they can make some drama. And if somebody's not playing by the rules, in other words, if you get into an inpatient kind of situation and someone's there against their will and they're just constantly throwing a temper tantrum, that will piss off people with mental illness. And they'll get tired of it real quick. And they'll let you know real quick that either you knock it off or you're going to get your ass kicked. It's pretty simple, and they can make life very difficult. The mentally ill can be very um, clever at making your life a misery. And um, never underestimate the mentally ill. Um, sorry for the ums. But that's... This lighthouse thing for me has been a godsend. Now, I have been looking for something to do <clears throat> for years. And sitting home isolating is very difficult on the soul. It's very difficult on the mind. It's very difficult on the emotions. Now, having some place I can go or I can socialize with real human beings is... And, and feel a sense of accomplishment. And when I say accomplishment, I'm not talking about huge accomplishments. I'm talking about everyday accomplishments. For example, the last time I was at the lighthouse, I washed the dishes after lunch. There was 25 people in the room. So I washed dishes for 25 people. That was an accomplishment. I had someone there with me to make sure that I was washing things properly, A, and B, that, you know, helping me put things in the dishwasher and run the dishwasher because they have a commercial dishwasher that sanitizes things. So you wash the dishes first really well, and then you sanitize them second. So it's just like being in a commercial kitchen. And it was a sense of accomplishment to do this, to volunteer, to do this, to keep the lighthouse running that day 
I washed all the dishes. Now, I could have chosen another job. I could have chosen a job of cleaning the tables. I could have chosen a job in the office, uh, doing the banking or whatever I wanted to do. But that was something I was comfortable at and knew I could accomplish um, without too much assistance. And I actually required no assistance. I just, But there was somebody else there, a teammate, that was there to take the dishes that I washed, stack them in the sanitizer, sanitize them, and then put them away. So it worked out great. I got to do my favorite part, which just is washing the dishes, not the least favorite part, which is drying and putting crap away. Um, at my home, I have a rack, an air dryer, and everything goes in the rack, um, which is easy enough. So this was like a human rack. I was like, yeah, cool, great. Um, what else is going on? I have <clears throat> a new therapist, and I see this new therapist once every two weeks, um, usually on Mondays. And my therapist is very challenging to me because it, he asks me to think about things that are hard to even quantify. And I'll give you an example. Where do you want to go? Now, when you ask the average person, where do you want to go? you usually get some kind of trite answer. But when you ask somebody in therapy, where do you want this to go, or where do you want to go with this, it becomes a whole different question. Now, think of yourself in a therapy setting, and think of yourself in my situation with, I've been living with mental illness for 41 years. <clears throat> Now, where do I want to go with that? Well, I where have I been? That's first the great question. Where have I been? Everywhere. I've been in the, the lowly um, moments of being forced into a mental hospital against my will. Um, for not even my mental illness, for something that had nothing to do with my mental illness, which was definitely a low point in my life. Um... I've had a complete breakdown, which I had several years ago. That was a low point in my life. And I had almost 30 years of <clears throat> being a workaholic, which kept me busy so that my mental illness wouldn't get in the way. And people just had to deal with my wrath occasionally when they would push my buttons or... Um, offend me in a way that that would set off my mental illness and my wicked streak. And I do have a wicked streak. For those that, that know me um, really well, uh, you have to know me really well to know my wicked streak, but I am wicked. Um, so in that situation, um, where do I go? Now, I can't go to normal because there's no such thing as normal. There's no goalpost at normal for anyone at any time for any reason. And where do I want to go? And I've been kicking this back and forth in my head for weeks now. And I don't know where I want to go. Um... I've explored just about everything I can explore with mental illness. And I've gotten to the point where I'm considered a success as far as therapeutically dealing with myself and keeping myself under control and being able to communicate and being able to communicate in um, a high um how do they say that? Uh, at a high level. So, where do I go from there? 
if I'm already where most people think that I'm, quote, as healed as they're going to get, and I don't feel like that. I don't feel like I'm as healed as it's going to get. People don't see me 24 hours a day. They see me a few minutes on a vlog. They see me um, for a couple of hours, but they don't see me 24-7, 365. I am a very complicated person. I have moments where I have uncontrolled emotions, um, where I will laugh just uncontrollably for no reason, or I'll cry just like the saddest cry you've ever cried in your life, just tears, tears streaming down my face until it, the point it hurts and I'm dehydrated and there's no particular reason. And then I'll just put on sad music and, or it, sometimes it's happy music that just makes me sad and cry. Now, that doesn't sound like a normal person. That's not normal. But that's some, that's how I cope. I have to let these emotions out. And I do. And I do it successfully. But I have, that takes time. I can't stop in the middle of my day, for example, if I had a job, and go cry for an hour or two, or go laugh for an hour or two. I can't do that. But I can do that in my normal life. I, I have a lot of time. I, I only can volunteer so many hours or so many hours per week, because if I volunteer any more as a member of the Lighthouse, for example, then suddenly people are going to see what makes me mentally ill. And not that I'm ashamed of that, but it's disruptive. And it's something that no one needs to deal with other than me. It's my issue. It's no one else's issue. Now, most mental ill, Ill people don't get to that point where they realize it's just their issue and they need to deal with it. They want to bring everyone along for the ride. And I don't think everyone should come along for the ride um, with my issues. So going back to the point of where do I go from here? I really don't know. Life has been an unfolding journey. I suppose I should. And it's been working well as an unfolding journey. It's had its ups and downs and its bumps and its dips and everything else, but in the long run, it seems that the longer I survive, the longer I continue putting effort on a minute-by-minute -minute basis and holding on to your quote-unquote sanity when you're mentally ill is a minute-by-minute -minute proposition. It's not one of those propositions where you just put in an hour a week it's a minute by minute thing. And if you, like myself, have um, scary disorders that scare people, which I do, um, which always entertains me how scared people get um, about the mind and about these magic words that scare people. Um, I have schizoaffective disorder, which is one of my lead things, PTSD being my second. Um, but schizoaffective disorder is something that I have and it's all the best of schizophrenia and all the best of bipolar disorder mixed into one happy soup. So that means like your hallucinations can have mood swings, literally. That's what it means. It can happen. I've seen it. And not only can you have visual hallucinations, you can have auditory hallucinations, etc., etc. Now, recently, in the last, um, since January, when I went to the mental hospital, I checked myself in. I was exhausted and losing it. So I checked myself in for a readjustment. And I came out and they gave me a new medicine called Abilify. Um, I've been on the medicine before, but they took me off because of my diabetes. Abilify has a nasty side effect, which is raising your blood sugar. But it also helps with my antidepressant. And it helps 
get through, it helps me get through the day much smoother than I would otherwise without Abilify. So my doctor, after all these years, and I decided that it would be wise to stick with the Abilify and just deal with it and monitor my blood sugar more carefully and hope that the benefits of the Abilify will cancel out the negatives of my diabetes. So it's it's a crapshoot. Every day is a crapshoot. You never quite understand, you know, like there's no perfect solution here for anything. But the Abilify, in the long run, because I never was on it in a long-term basis, has changed me. And it's been a struggle. And some people would think that that would change me, you know, my change would be for the better. But in my own head, it's not necessarily been better. It's been different. And not necessarily good at first. For most of my life, I've had seven voices that talk in my head constantly, constantly, night and day. And they commit back and forth and argue. It's like sitting in a round table full of a bunch of old ladies. Um, sorry to old ladies, but that's just what it's like. And um, this kibitzing and kibitzing and kibitzing and kibitzing and arguing and, and trashing each other and laughing and you name it, the whole nine yards. So these seven voices just kind of went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And at first, obviously, that's very distracting. And learning how to deal with that and get on with life and pay attention to the, to the, to the awake world when you're awake um, and not just to the voices is something that you have to learn. You have to train yourself. You have to put effort in, a lot of effort. Not just a little effort, a lot of effort. And once you do, it pays off because then you can be present and part of the real world. Now, when I started taking the Abilify long term, when it got to the long term phase, meaning after a few weeks, um, after a month, I believe, and it was ramped up in my system, suddenly my voices started to fade. Not all of them. But four out of the seven started to fade. And it panicked me. And it panicked the other voices. It panicked my whole system was absolutely panicked that what had happened here? There were the four voices. What happened? What's going to change? Oh, my God. And you'd think, oh, well, that's great. Abilify is really working for you. But if you're used to having seven voices in your head, and suddenly now they're fading and there's only three that are really active. It changes the conversation. And then you worry, well, are three going to be able to agree easier than seven, which would make me more impetuous and to do things that the seven voices kept me from doing for a long time, including killing myself. Um, because seven voices would never go for that. But with three, I don't know. So fortunately, the three that remain are very independent and they are very well-spoken and they're very opinionated and they don't agree on much, which is good, healthy for me, because as long as they're not agreeing and then I'm agreeing and we're all agreeing, because when we're all agreeing, action gets taken. That's how action gets taken with me. I do not do things unless everyone agrees. Me and all the voices in my head. And the people around me generally. Um, I don't take action. So, <clears throat> but when I do, I do. And I don't blink. And I don't go back. Um, and I don't regret. So, for me, this was kind of scary. It's a whole new world. And... I'm still getting used to it. But where do I want to go from here? In the short term, I want to get used to only having three voices in my head instead of seven. I want to continue to 
deal with my hallucinations as well as I do. <clears throat> because unlike a lot of people, I have a lot of active hallucinations, visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, and taste. I even taste stuff, which is strange, but I do. And they're hallucinations. Now, <clears throat> then you put in the whole paranormal thing, and you got yourself a whole circus in my head, um, which is real hallucinations and paranormal, which has always been the situation with me since I was nine. And I've got the three pretty, I've got the three realities pretty much under control. I just now have less advice in my head in dealing with them. So in the short term, dealing with the reality of having less voices is something that I need to do. But where I'm going to or where that will lead is something I just simply at this point can't answer. Now, if you have a nifty idea, you can write it below in my um, conversational box on YouTube or on Facebook because I'll post this on Facebook and you can let me know where you think I should go. But right now, just holding a lid on life and enjoying what can be enjoyed, just the simple things, um, is about what the best I can hope for. And keeping, the, and keeping myself out of the hospital as much as possible is about the best I can hope for. So I guess <clears throat> that's what I'm going to do. Now, in closing, I know this was a long rambling kind of, where is this going, Michael? But that was the question. Where is this going, Michael? I needed to do a vlog about this because it constantly is on my mind. And as we all know, I do vlogs not for you, for me. So that I can look back and say, okay, um, that was on my mind, or this is an issue at one time, or look where I've been, or look where I'm going, or something. It's always a message. And I do look back on my videos from time to time, especially if I'm stuck somewhere. So if I'm stuck, I look back to see if I can get unstuck. And um, so that's about it. So it's nice talking to everybody today. Glad to see y'all. I hope somebody watches this besides me. But if they don't, they don't. Who cares? Um, that's it. Have a good one. Talk to you later.